to be feeding us every time we gather together. Kwa kutujaza kila siku tunapokutana. We need this food. Tunahitaji chakula. You cannot only succeed with the physical food. Hauwezi tu kufaulu na hii chakula ya kawaida. You also need spiritual food. Unahitaji pia chakula ya kiroho. That can sustain your spirit man. Ambayo itakutoshelesha. Because if you don't feed the spirit man, kama hautalisha roho the physical man will eventually die. So the only way out is for your spirit to be fed. And you cannot enjoy the spirit things if you are not born again. Salvation is very important. It is what enables you to have a desire to love the things of God. You'll desire his house. And you'll desire spiritual things. And so last week, we were looking at courtship, Christian courtship. Part one. We were able to see that courtship is an adopted word. That is used to describe the, the biblical pattern or a biblical way for the relationship between man and a woman that leads to marriage. need to understand that marriage came from God. And so it is only him who has the pattern that is why if we try to do things uh, according to our own understanding we do not succeed and so God came up with the model of marriage when he created Adam and Eve they were not toddlers Adam and Eve were not born Adam na Eva awakuzaliwa. They were created by God. Walitengenezwa nae Mungu. So they came into the picture as mature adults. Walikuja katwa sira kama watu ambao wamekoma. But now from there God now teaches us about marriage. Kwanza hapo Mungu anatufundisha kuhusu ndoa. We were able to read about it in the morning from the book of Genesis. Na tukaweza kusoma asubuhi ya leo asubuhi ya leo kutoka katika kitabu cha mwanzo. That the time will come when a man shall leave his father and mother and go and cleave unto the woman. Kuwa but before you start living together there has to be a wedding and before you wed there is a process that you're supposed to go through and that is courtship we were able to see that courtship is different from dating according to the world they, they prefer dating and you see dating leads to sex before marriage while courtship is a journey that takes you or rather it is objective hallelujah Amen. and so we saw that also courtship period is a counting period and so we saw that uh, 
the primary cause of marriage is not only to please us but also to please God. Tukaona kiwango kidogo basi cha ndoa si tu kwa kufurahisha sisi lakini pia ni kumfurahisha Mungu. And so today I want us to look at the processes that we will lay, that we lay a good solid foundation for your for your future home. Leo tunataka kuona kuwa zile 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 misingi mizuri ambazo because however much beautiful a house may look it needs a foundation and for it to be able to stand for so many years it needs a proper foundation there are no two ways about it if you begin with the wrong foundation it will be known because the house will develop cracks the house will start sinking the house will come down one day all the energy that you had put in your wrong foundation will be wasted and so with God things are the way they are and the truth will never cease to be the truth simply because you don't want to believe it whether you believe it or not the truth remains the truth there is seed time there is harvest time the sun rises from the east and it will set to the west hallelujah Amen. and so God is wonderful he tells you prior so that you don't make mistakes mistakes that you're going to live with the consequences because every decision we make in life it has consequences so whether we like it or not the only the, the only option that we have is to be obedient. And so, the first process, category A, number one, be one another's friend. Read for me Proverbs 17, 17 and chapter 18 verses 22 to 24. For those who have a pen, I will appreciate if you can write down. And you will also read Proverbs 18. Verses 22 to 24. If you're there, please. Proverbs 17, 17 says... A friend loves at all times and a brother is born for adversity. Rafiki e Rafiki hupenda siku zote na ndugu amezaliwa kwa siku ya taabu. The Bible says a friend will love at all times. Rafiki hupenda siku zote. Because love covers a multitude of sins. Kwa sababu upendo unafinika dhambi. And for your courtship to be able to grow into marriage. Na kwa kuchumbia kwako kuweze kukua e the foundation has to be both of you need to love each other you need to be friends friends tell each other so many things they don't hide things from each other and that is why you find when you get time to talk to one another and you become friends you'll be able to know the other person you will know what they like and what they don't like through talking you will not only get messages from what they tell you but even from the body language you will see how they behave you will see how they talk to others a friend will correct you when you go astray and so when you become friends 
Sasa eh kwa hivyo mnapokuwa marafiki You can even be lenient to one another you will you will not be hard on each other Utasikilizana hamtakuwa kwa gumu kwa kwa nyinyi wote wawili Read for me chapter 18:22-24 Soma 18:22 22:24 He who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. The Bible says he who finds a wife finds a good thing. Biblia inasema kwa apataye mke apata kitu chema and obtains favor from God. Naye ajipatia kibali kwa Bwana. So when a young man is looking for a wife, wakati mtanashati anamtafuta mke, she needs to understand there is a favor that comes along when getting a wife anapaswa kuelewa kuwa kuna kibali ambayo pia huwa inamfuata kwa wakati ambapo anatafuta there are good things that a wife comes along with amen there are good things that a wife will come along with kuna vitu vizuri ambazo mke atakuja nazo you may have a house anaweza kuwa na nyumba but i want to tell you something lakini nataka kukuambia kitu when your mother comes into that house as a young man wakati mamako atakuja kwa hiyo nyumba kama we mtanashati she can tell if there was a woman in that place atakwambia kama kulikuwa na mke katika nyumba hiyo because the touch of a woman in that house changes everything kwa sababu tu mshiko kwa mwanamke katika hiyo nyumba inabadilisha kila the house will be orderly nyumba itakuwa imepangwa vizuri the clothes will be arranged manguo yatapangwa vizuri the sink will be clean eh vyombo pale hivyo vitaoshwa and even if you have another woman the other woman will say there was a woman in this place hata kama utakuwa bado na mke mwenza ama mpango wa kando huyo mke wako atakwambia kwa kulikuwa na mke katika nyumba a wife brings order in your life mke analeta mpangilio kwa maisha yako a wife beautifies your house mke anarembesha nyumba yako she will think of beautiful curtains atafikiria kuleta vitambara vizuri she will think of nice pillow covers atafikiria kuleta zile nguo za pilo zile nzuri men are fond of sleeping on blankets a wife will think of a bed sheet wanaume hupenda kulala katika juu ya blanketi lakini mwanamke atafikiria kuleta zile vitambaa vya kitanda and so there are many favors that come along with having a wife kuna kuna kibali nyingi ambazo huwa zinakuja ukiwa na mke that is why a man ought to make the wife his friend ndio maana mwanaume anapaswa kumfanya mke kuwa rafiki yake and the woman has to make the husband her friend na mwanamke pia anapaswa kufanya mume kuwa rafiki yake i was sharing with the youth this morning and then i shared with them that when god created adam and eve the bible says they were naked alikuwa na shiriki na wanarika asubuhi asubuhi ya leo na akamwambia kuwa wakati mungu alikuwa akiwaumba Adam na Eve walikuwa uchi. When a man and a woman are naked it, it simply shows a sign of honesty. Wakati mwanamke na mwanaume basi kwa kwa uchi inaonesha basi kuna ukweli fulani. It's a sign of transparency. Kuna eh, ni ashiria ya ukweli. Kuonyesha waziwazi. Ni ashiria basi kia, eh, kia kuonyesha. And you wazi cannot wazi. be transparent to somebody who is not your friend. Na awezi kuwa wazi kwa ule mtu ambaye si rafiki yako. Friendship ignites some things in your life. Urafiki inaleta vitu fulani katika maisha yako. And so this person that you are to get married to or wants to marry you, both of you have to be friends. Huyo mtu ambaye unataka kuelewa kwake ama ama anataka ku eh kukuoa basi mnapaswa kuwa marafiki Read verses 24 Soma mstari wa 24 A man who has friends must himself be friendly but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother Read Ajifanyae rafiki wengi ni kwa uangamivu wake mwenyewe lakini yuko rafiki ambata naye na mtu kuliko ndugu. Hallelujah. Amen. A man that hath friends must show himself friendly unto others. Mwanadamu ambaye ana marafiki anafaa kuonesha urafiki wake kwa wao wengine. You need to be friendly to the person you are getting married to. Unapaswa kuwa na urafiki kwa kwa yule mtu ambaye unamuoa. And even the young man should be friendly to the woman. Na hata mvulana barubaru anapaswa kuwa na urafiki na huyo msichana. The second process under part A is that develop your friendship and companionship relationship. Njia nyingine ni kuwe ni kutengeneza uhusiano na ile umoja kati yenu. That is Genesis chapter 2 verse 18. Read for me. Hiyo ni mwanzo mlango wa pili 18. The Bible says and the Lord God said it is not good that the man should be alone 
I will make him a help meet for him. Biblia inasema kuwa Bwana Mungu akasema si vyema huyu mtu awe peke yake nitamfanyia msaidizi wa kufanana naye. One thing I, I believe is that loneliness bites. Kitu moja ambacho mchungaji anaamini kuwa upweke unaumiza. It is not sweet to be alone. Si vyema kuwa na upweke ama kuwa peke yako. I've heard people say food tastes better when you eat more than one person. Ameisikia watu wakisema kuwa chakula huwa kinakuwa kitamu wakati mnakula mkiwa. You may have meat on your table but when you are eating alone it is not tasty. Unaweza kuwa na meza kwa meza eh unaweza kuwa na nyama kwa meza yako lakini unapokula peke yake unakihisi kuwa sikitamu. But if you have the simplest meal you realize when you are two, three, four people the meal is tasty. Lakini unapokuwa na kile kichakula tu kidogo cha kawaida alafu mnakula wengi basi utagundua kuwa chakula ni kitamu. And so God looked at Adam and said Adam is alone. Mungu akamwangalia Adam na akaona kuwa basi Adam yuko peke yake. It is not good for man to be alone. Na akasema kuwa si vizuri ama si vyema kwa mwanaume kuwa peke yake. Why do people get into courtship? Sasa mbona watu wanaingia katika kuchumbiana? It is because many of them after getting a job and getting money they realize life is not full. Ni kwa sababu kwa watu wengi wanaona kwa eh, wakati kwa shapata kazi wana pesa wanaona kuwa maisha bado eh, they realize apart even from salvation I need someone in my life. Wanagundua hata kando na uokovu basi na mhitaji mtu katika maisha. And so your friendship should should develop to companionship. Uhusiano wenu unapasa ujengwe kwa kuwa na ile kujuana zaidi. You are supposed to be close. Mnapasa kuwa karibu. Whereby even when you get older. Kwa hiyo wakati wakati ambapo hata utakapokula chuo You come to realize marriage is not about all about sex. Utagundua kuwa ndoa si kuhusu tu ngono. It begins as as though it's a, it's all about sex. Ikianza inaanza kama ni kama tu eh, ndoa eh, ni kuhusu But as time goes by. Lakini wakati eh, nyakati zinakimbia. Years go by. Miaka zinayoyoma. You realize that sex is not all that important. It is important but it is, but it is not the main thing. Utagundua kuwa ngono si si ile kitu kuu katika ndoa yenu. But you realize you just feel good when you see your partner. Utajihisi eh, utagundua kuwa unajihisi tu vizuri unapoona mwenzako yuko. When you see your partner around. Unapoona mwenzako yuko hapo nawe karibu. And you sit down with a cup of porridge. Na mnaketi chini na kikombe cha uji. And then you drink together as you chat. Mnakunywa pamoja mkipiga soga. That is companionship. Hiyo ndiyo eh, kujuana zaidi. This is your person. Huyu ni mtu wako. In case you need somebody to talk to. Eh, Eh, labda unataka mtu kwa kuongea You don't need an appointment with this person. Hauhitaji nyaraka na huyu mtu. And that is why when you get married. Ndio maana utakapoolewa ama utakapoa. Your spouse will be asking you uko wapi? Mwenzio atakuuliza kuwa uko wapi? Umefika wapi? Je, where are you right now? It is because they need you. It's, eh, ni kwa sababu wanakuhitaji. They have missed you. Wame eh, <laughs> wana miso nawe. They need you around. Even your children sometimes my children normally call me and 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 ask me daddy where are you? Hata watoto wake huko wanampigia simu na wanamuuliza baba uko wapi? One who is not your friend will be least bothered yule, where you are. Yule ambaye si rafiki yako hata shughulika hata mahali upo. The third process is no no one no one another as much as possible. Ya tatu ni jua mwenzako kwa undani na kwa haraka. This is only possible if you are a prayerful person. Hii ni kwa uraisi ama inaweza tu kuwezekana kama wewe ni mtu ambaye unaomba. The people who are not born again they move physically. Watu ambao hawajaokoka wanasonga kwa mwili. They move by sight. Wanasonga kwa kuona kwa macho. But if you are somebody who knows your God. Lakini kama wewe ni mtu ambaye unajua mguu wako. You will go beyond what you are seeing. Utaenda zaidi kwa kile ambacho unajiona. You'll be saying this man looks handsome. Utasema mtanasha tu hii basi anakaa vizuri. You'll be saying this woman looks very beautiful. Utasema eh, kidosho huyu basi ni mrembo. But I want to know more about this Lakin person. Lakini nahitaji kujua zaidi kuhusu mtu huyu. There are many times you could be looking at a very nice cup. Kuna vitu eh, kuna wakati nyingi unaweza kuwa unaona kikombe kizuri It appears to be clean outside Inaonekana kuwa ni kisafi inje. But inside the content is rotten Lakini ndani ya kikombe hicho basi kimeoza Need to know the kind of a person you are getting getting into marriage with Unapaswa kuelewa yule mtu ambaye unataka 
And so the Bible says in Jeremiah 33 verses 3. Call unto me and I will answer. And I will show you great things that thou knowest not. There are many things in life that you don't know. It is only God who can see the hearts of men. When people want to get married, they have a tendency of covering a lot of a lot of bad things. But when you pray, God will reveal to you who this person really is. This is very important to prevent you from getting into a divorce. Because the Bible tells us that God hates divorce. It is never the joy of the Lord to see you parting with your spouse. Nowadays people easily divorce because they feel like. God doesn't move with how you feel like. He moves as per the principles laid down between your relationship and him. Since you chose to get married to that man, stay with that man. Since you chose to get married to that woman, stay with that woman. I know many women will dispute what I've said by saying how can you tell me to stay with a cheating husband. I'm here to tell you you are the one who made the decision. And if, and, and, and if we look keenly you began your relationship wrongly. When you begin with fornication, that means you are opening doors for your house to be a den of cheating. The moment you, you engage in sex before marriage, you are opening doors to, to improper sex in your marriage. And that, is, and that is how life is. I will not sugarcoat it. Many women who speak badly of men. If you watch keenly, they did not start their marriages on a proper foundation. And if you don't know God, you will reject men because they rejected men. But I'm here to tell you, if you do it the right way, your marriage will be wonderful. When you read the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 verses 30, it is among the curses of disobedience. The Bible says, Thou shalt betroth a wife, and another man shall lie with her. Thou shalt build a house, and thou shalt not dwell therein. 28.30 kumbukumbu la torati 28:30 inasema utaposa mke na mume mwingine atalala naye utajenga nyumba usikae utapanda mizabibu usitumie that is what happens when you start sleeping with your boyfriend because before he becomes your husband you have stolen that woman from the father you have not sought the permission of the father Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. And so the same thing will happen in your marriage. Another man will sleep with your husband or your wife without your permission. Because the foundation of that marriage was fornication. 
ilianza vibaya and so the product of your marriage will be adultery na matunda cha ndoa hiyo basi itakuwa kusii kule these things will not happen when you are dead they will happen while you are seeing hizi vitu hazitafanyika kama umefariki zitafanyika ukiona kwa these are things that you see when you get older hizi ni vitu ambazo utaanza kuona wakati unazeeka unakula there some mistakes you can never see when you are young kuna makosa zingine ambazo hautaona kama bado wewe ni barubaru when you are young it will feel like it is your right wakati wewe ni barubaru utaona kuwa ni haki yako then you justify your sin very well now utatetea dhambi zako vizuri and these principles have been laid by god na malengo haya basi They will never change. Because this word is God. And the Bible says in Malachi that for I am the Lord and I change it not. And God being the word he cannot change his word. And he says in the book of Isaiah chapter 55 that whatever word he sends out it doesn't come back until it has accomplished that which it was sent to do. Hallelujah. Amen. Unfortunately people use that scripture when they are talking of blessings. But the word of God has got blessings and curses. And so every curse that he has spoken concerning our negative actions will come to pass. Na kila ambacho ameongelelea kuhusu matendo yetu mabaya litakuja kutimia. And so it is very important. Na anasema kuwa ni kitu la maana. That you get to know each other as much as possible. Kuwa kuwa muweze kujuana kwa 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 uare eh, So kwa that you get to know what you're getting yourself into. Na upate kujua ni nini ambacho unajiingiza ndani. Is he a harsh woman? Is she a harsh woman? Je, ni mwanamke ule mkali? Is he a man who likes sleeping a lot? How are you going to handle the weaknesses of this person? Because the way you will handle the weaknesses of your spouse is what will determine if that marriage is going to stay. Kwa sababu jinsi utakavyoshughulikia yale makosa kwa mume wako itaonesha kama hiyo ndoa itakaa ama haitakaa. So don't be cheated by women who say when my husband cheats I will leave ask them how did you begin your marriage? Usidanganye na wale wanawake ambao ambao wanasema kuwa mume wangu akisinzi huku eh, nje basi mimi nitamwacha. They are simply harvesting what they planted before they started living together. Wanavuna kile kile ambacho kwalipanda kabla hawajaanza kuishi pamoja. People who say that marriage is a scam. Wale watu ambao eh, ambao wanasema kuwa ndoa basi ni kitu mbaya. Simply ask them how did you begin? Waulize je mlianzaje? The fourth point is know each other's character, strength, weaknesses. Yaani ndo nguvu zake na eh, na uvivu wake mahali. And dislikes. Na zile vitu ambazo hazipendi. And even to add on that. Na hata kuongezea pia when you have time wakati una, una make mita, sure if you are a woman get your girlfriends eh, kama wewe ni mwanamke tafuta kwa sitana wengine and other males ha, other other male companions in your circle of friendship na wale pia kwa naume wengine katika uhusiano wenu wa urafiki of which some of them are also his friends kwa pia kwengine wao basi ni rafiki yake go and visit their home watembelee kule manyumbani kwa visit as friends tembea kama basi rafiki don't allow the man to, in, to introduce you that time usimruhusu mume eh, akukaribishe hiyo wakati when kama both of you are not mtiko. ready wakati ninyi wote amuko tayari i want you to study how the how the mother treats the father nataka ukasome jinsi mama yake anamfanyia baba yake that is the Ama language of love that this man knows hiyo hiyo ndio mapenzi ambayo mwanaume huyu hiyo ndio lugha ya mapenzi hiyo ndio lugha ya mapenzi ambayo mwanaume huyu anajua so instead of you complaining later that uh, i don't like my husband because he wants me to treat him this way or that way you will have learned from the way you saw the mother treat Badala. the father badala ya wewe kunungunika kuwa simtaki mume wangu kwa sababu anataka nimfanyie hii na hii utakuwa ushajifundisha kutoka kwa mama yake if the father is normally washed by the mother kama baba yake huwa anaoshwa na mama yake before eating kabla ya kula that is the language he knows hiyo ndio lugha ambayo basi anatambua if the man is being served by the mother kama mwanaume huwa 
anaandaliwa chakula kwa meza na mama na bibi yake it means you need to be ready to be serving him before he eats he Inamani, doesn't serve himself inamaanisha kuwa ukwe tayari kwa kumwandalia chakula and there are many things that you can see the way even the mother addresses the father while talking na kuna vitu ambavyo pia unaweza vingi kwa kati mama yake anamwongelesha baba yake secondly when you look at the father the way he is aging that is how your husband will look like when he is old ya pili ni unapoona jinsi baba yake baba yake amekula chumvi ama amezeeka hivyo ndivyo mume wako atakaa and the same case applies to the young man na pia hiyo He needs to visit the woman's family with his friends as friends to the lady. Anapaswa kutembelea hiyo familia kwa msichana na marafiki zake kama tu unafikiri. And to see how the father is treating the mother. Na aone jinsi baba anavyomtendea mke wake. That is the language this little girl knows. Hiyo ndio lugha ambayo kidosho huyu basi anaelewa. If the father used to surprise the mother This girl expects you to be surprising her from time to time. Kama babake alikuwa na mzawadi mama yake kila wakati, surprise basi kidosho huyu anataka pia wewe ukwe unafanya. If the father used to cook food sometimes in the house, this little girl will will expect you to be cooking at times. Kama babake alikuwa akipika pia huyu kidosho anaelewa kwa pia wewe utakuwa unafanya. You need knowledge and wisdom for you to run your marriage. Unahitaji maarifa na hekima kwa wewe kuendeleza ndoa yako. That is adding on to salvation. Hiyo ndio kuongeza katika Ukristo. Salvation alone cannot cannot help. Uokovu peke yake haiwezi kusaidia. But when you are learning as a born again it helps you more. Lakini wakati unajifundisha kama mtu ambaye amezaliwa mara ya pili inakusaidia. So when you learn na unapoelewa about the opposite sex unapojifundisha kuhusu hiyo hiyo uhusiano mwingine number one is their nature nyingine ni tabia yao what is the nature of men je ni tabia gani ndio asili asili ni asili gani ambayo ni wanaume you need to learn about the nature of women unapaswa kujifundisha kuhusu asili ya wanawake because the woman in kenya is the same as the woman in canada kwa sababu mwanamke ambaye yuko hapa kenya ni sawa na ule women love surprises. Wanawake kwa wanapenda zawadi. Women love chocolates. Wanapenda chocolate. Women love flowers. Wanapenda maua. Women love to be praised. Wanawake wanapenda kusifiwa. Women love gifts. Wanawake basi wanapenda zawadi. Women love to be talked to in a sweet manner. Wanawake kwa wanapenda kuongelesha kwa ile Women want to be protected. Wanawake wanataka kulindwa. A man needs to learn that as the nature of women. Mwanaume anapaswa kuelewa hiyo kama asilia ya mwanamke. The woman needs to learn about the nature of men. Mwanamke pia anapaswa kuelewa asilia ya mwanaume. Number one men want to be respected. Mwanaume anapaswa kuheshimiwa. You shouldn't talk to him anyhow. Usimwongeleshe tu hivi hivi kama mtoto. A man wants a woman that can listen. Mwanaume anataka yule mke ambaye anaweza akamsikiza not a stiff necked woman si yule mwanamke ambaye ni kichwa ngumu ana shingo ngumu because she won't listen kwa sababu hatasikia because one of the things that has made some women to stay out of marriage or to or to live a life whereby they are not married is that if you check in one of the reasons is they are stiff necked sababu moja ambayo imewafanya kwa wanawake wengine kutoingia kwa ndoa ni kuwa wako shingo ngumu hao ni vichwa ngumu and so the husband finds it hard to lead somebody that cannot move mwanaume anapata ugumu kumongoza mtu ambaye hasongeki yuko imagine if you have a donkey fikiria kama una punda and you want it to move na unaitaka basi isonge but it is not moving lakini haisongi will you stay there the, the whole day je utakawia hapo hivyo siku nzima you will sell that donkey or you will leave it there and go and look for another one utayacha hiyo eh, utaacha punda hiyo ikiwa pale and so many women ask why am i not getting married why don't why don't men love me wanawake wengi huwa wanaulizwa If you check closely there are so many men who who tried to court her. Ukiangalia vizuri utapata kuwa kuna wanaume wengi walijaribu kumchumbia. But when they peeped in the jar. Lakini kwa lipochungulia katika kikombe. They found this one ni kichwa ngumu. Wakampata yeye ni kichwa ngumu. Ukiwa kichwa ngumu ndoa haiwezi kaa. When you are stiff naked that marriage cannot. Hata wewe uwezi kaa na kondoo ambayo hitaki kusikia kila saa inagonga gonga watu. 
You cannot stay with that ship ambayo eh, ni kichwa ngumu. Hiyo kichwa ngumu unaweza ukaitumia vizuri. Hiyo kichwa That stiff necked character you can use it well. Thank you. Hallelujah. Instead of fighting your family. Fight the people who want to fight your family. Be tough to the enemies of your family. But the problem is Tunatoyo kichwa ngumu kwa maadui, tunapiga huyu mjamaa, tunapiga watoto nayo. Amen. And there you find marriage aikai. You find that marriage cannot last. Mwanaume anapitia hapo nasema hii kichwa ngumu tutatoboa. Naye mwanaume hasemangi hiyo tu anafikirianga kama tu kwake alafu kuanzia hiyo siku hachukui simu yako. Mhm. Unaanza kushangaa mbona huyu mwanaume siku hizi hanitafutangi. Wacha nikwambie. Tembea katika street yenu tuko na wanawake wa rembo sijui kama nini. But they are not married. Miaka imesonga. Yes. Do you know why? One of the reasons ukiangalia vizuri ni kichwa ngumu. Sababu moja when you look keenly you will find that they are stiff neck. Na hiyo kichwa ngumu inakujanga na hataki kukosolewa. And that stiff neck come, uh, comes when she does Now, not want to be The Bible will say the man is the head. Biblia inasema kuwa mwanaume ni So that means you are the president you are the king in that home. Inamaanisha kuwa wewe ni rais na wewe ni mfalme kwa nyumba hiyo. And so the president has people he's leading. Na rais ana wale watu ambao anaongoza. How can you lead somebody who can't even follow you? Je, unaweza ongoza haja mtu ambaye hata eh, hakufuati. And so a man starts struggling. Mwanaume anaanza kumenyana. He becomes stressed. Anakuwa na isia nyingi kwa akili yake to a point that some of them even start drinking anakuwa na mawazo hadi unapata kuwa kwa shanza kwa wale and he chooses to marry another one na anachagua kwa mke mwingine the second reason why some ladies are not getting married is bitterness sababu ya pili ambayo kwa wanawake wengine ama kwa sana wengine hawaeleki ni kuwa kwa sababu wana machungu they are bitter because they began relationships wana machungu kwa sababu walianza uhusiano and that relationships led to dating na hiyo uhusiano ilielekezwa kwa dating and as you know dating leads to sex before marriage na unajua kuwa dating inaelekeza kwa ndoa kabla ya inaelekeza kwa tendo la ndoa kabla ya ndoa so this woman loves this man so much mwanamke huyu anampenda mume huyu sana and says i don't want to lose this man na anasema kwa sitaki kumpoteza mwanaume huyu so because of that na kwa sababu ya hiyo i'm going to give him my body nitaenda kumpatia mwili wake and even on top of that na kuongezea pia if the man is staying alone kama mwanaume anakaa peke yake i will take there my blouse itapeleka pale nguo yangu so that if, if if another woman comes wakati mwanamke mwingine atakuja and sees the blouse na aone nguo yangu iko hapo the woman will say There is another woman here. Mwanamke atasema kuwa kulikuwa na mwanamke mwingine. She takes their her dress. Anapeleka pale vazi lake. She takes their her shoes. Anapeleka hivyo vazi zake pale. Sleeps there one day. Analala kule siku moja. Sleeps the uh, 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 two days. Analala siku mbili. After one week sleeps there three days. Baada ya wiki moja pia anaongezea kulala hapo usiku. You tatu. find that this woman starts treating a boyfriend as a husband. Unapata mwanamke huyu anaanza kum eh, anamshughulikia kijana huyu kama mme wake and because this thing is not official na kwa sababu vitu hivi basi si za kawaida rasmi. si rasmi the man doesn't feel tied mwanaume huyu ajisi ni kama ame and when a man doesn't feel tied he always feels at the back of his mind psychologically i can walk out any day na kama mwanamke mwanaume ajisi kuwa anapendwa huwa anajihisi kuwa anaweza toka tu kwa hiyo ndoa kama mwanaume hajaisi kuwa amefungwa kama mwanamke hajaisi kuwa amefungwa anaweza ondoka hapo hapo siku and so the best way to tie a man is through the wedding process njia njia nzuri ya kumfunga mwanaume basi ni kupitia if he loves you let him put a ring on your finger kama anakupenda basi acha afunge pingu za maisha because if Now. that does not happen the same way he came in the same way he will walk out kama hiyo haitafanyika jinsi alivyoingia basi ndivyo ataondoka and so you find a day comes the man says i think i've gotten another woman that is better than you na unapata kwa wakati itafika mwanaume atakwambia kuwa ninaona nimepata msichana mrembo kukuliko or sometimes 
or sometimes he may not say but you're going to find the messages on the phone siku zingine hata sema lakini utaona zile nyaraka katika simu and you'll become angry and angry and angry and then one day he'll just tell you but you're the one who came i didn't even call you utakasirishwa na siku moja atakuja kukwambia ah wewe tu ndio ulijileta hata siku kuita that time you're pregnant with twins amen that time you're pregnant with twins saizo una mimba ya mapacha and the man says leave my house na mwanaume anakuambia odoa kwa nyumba yako and the neighbors get 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 to have a free show na majirani kwa najionea video ya bunge watching how you are screaming and your things are being thrown out wanajionea video jinsi unavyopiga unyenda na vitu zako at that point there is no one to protect you wakati huo hauna ule mtu ambaye anaweza kukulinda because it was not made official kwa sababu haikufanywa kirasmi now you become bitter saizo una unaingiwa na machungu you meet another man you do the same thing unakutana na mwanaume mwingine unafanya vivyo hivyo you become bitter unakuwa na uchungu by the time we get to the third man kwa wakati utaenda kwa mwanaume watatu when god now sends a good man in your life or the right man wakati mungu anatuma sasa yule mwanaume aliye bora katika you cannot be good to him because you are full of bitterness because of your past relationships hawezi kuwa mzuri kwake kwa sababu umejazwa na machungu and here you are saying all manner of negative things about men Napa unaongea maongezi mabaya kuhusu wanaume How can you praise chaos when you were hanging out with dogs Je unaweza sifu aje ngombe kama kama ulikuwa unatembea na umma You were hanging out with men who were jumpy but you are general but you are general you, you are generalizing everyone Ulitembea na wanaume ambao walikuwa kiruka njia kama wakoko lakini sasa hizi Unawaita hawa wanaume wote. That is why any time we meet a woman who speaks negatively about men, start with how was the foundation? Yo kila wakati unapokutana na mwanamke ambaye anaongea vibaya kuhusu wanaume, why your parents involved? Je, wazazi wako walihusishwa? Was your pastor involved? Je, mchungaji wako alihusishwa ndani? Was your family involved? Familia yako ilihusishwa ndani? If the answer is yes, then that is a different thing altogether. Kama jibu lake litakuwa ya basi hilo ni kitu tofauti. But most of the time. Lakini wakati mwingi it is a wrong foundation. Ni msingi mbaya. That gives birth to anger. Ambayo ina inazaa uchungu. And anger machungu. gives birth to rage. Na machungu inazaa eh hasira kuu. Eh ile hasira. Hasira mbaya. Hasira mbaya. And you seen people that you you simply make a small mistake and they become so angry at you as though you have done something so big. Umayona kwa wale watu ambao umewafanyia kitu kidogo na wanakasirishwa kana kwamba umewafanyia kitu kubwa. They even become violent. Wanaanza hata kukupiga. Then that rage grows to bitterness. Hiyo asira inachangia kuwa na machungu. You can never live with anyone if you are a bitter person. Hauwezi ishi na mtu yote kama wewe ni You will be thrown out. You will be thrown out. Utakuwa unarushwa tu nje. Anger. Asira. Rage. Bitterness. Hasira na machungu. Has made many beautiful women to be single. Imefanya kwa wanawake wengi wa rembo kukuwa hawana wao. Because of wrong foundations. Kwa sababu ya msingi mbaya. Think, doing things the way they feel is right. Fanya vitu jinsi wanavyojisikia kufanya. I know tomorrow is Valentine. Anajua kesho ni siku ya Valentine. There will be so many fornications around. Anajua kwa kutakuwa na kusinzi kwingi kule nje. They will be buying of flowers. Kutakuwa na kununuliwa kwa maua. In the restaurants there will be men with mipango ya kando. Katika vimba vya kukula kule kutakuwa na wale kwa naume ambao wana eh panome ambako panacheza nje there will be wrong dates kutakuwa na uhusiano mbaya faulty foundations are going to be laid tomorrow uhusiano mbaya utaenda kujengwa kesho i wish you put your foundation on jesus natumai tu uweke msingi wako kwake i believe you've been watching news naamini kwa umekuwa ukiona and you've been and you've been seeing how men and women have been killing each other in marriage na umeona jinsi kwa naume na wake kwameuana katika ndoa. Check their foundations. Angalia misingi zao. The last point in in part A of the processes are friend loves in adversity or prosperity. Rafiki anapenda eh, anapenda kwa kufaulu kwako na hata kwa kutofaulu. Courtship process is a time whereby you are getting to know this future future spouse. 
kuchumbiana nile kwa wakati ambao unaenda kujua huyu mpenzi wako ambao mtakuja kuishi na yeye if you're in a relationship kama uko katika uhusiano you are the only one buying things wewe tu ndio unayenunua kila kitu unanunua tu vitu run away <laughs> Kimbia. Run away. Kimbia. That is a red flag. Hiyo ni ni bendera nyekundu asante. Because in marriage. Kwa sababu kwa ndoa. He was supposed to be buying for each other things. Unapaswa kuwa unanunuliana vitu. It is never good when it is only one person buying things. You are not a, a passenger in that marriage. When the man is buying some things in the house like sofa set. The wife needs to buy a bed sheet because the man bought the bed and the mattress. Mwanaume mwanamke anapaswa kununua kitamba cha kutandika kitanda. The wife needs to buy my vest. Mwanamke anapaswa kumnunulia ngo yake ya ndani. And even in where? Yes, ngo yake ya ndani. Hallelujah. It is the work of the wife. Ni kazi ya mke. Praise the Lord. Amen. It is the truth. Ni ukweli. Wives buy those things. Wanawake wananunua vitu. Talk to married talk to married women. Ongelesha hao wanawake ambao wanununulia mzee vest. Yes, they bought for their husband. Wanamnunulia na nguo ya ndani, boxer. Yes, kuna ununulia nini ile nguo ya ndani. Because wakati mtu anatoa when somebody releases or or gives out things. Wakati mtu anatoa vitu, he always feels good when one day is told hata wewe pokea. Huwa anajihisi vizuri when wakati anaambiwa even you receive. And so when you meet in a restaurant. Unapomkute unapokutana naye katika chumba cha kula. And you are the all, and you are and you are the one always buying food run away kimbia there is something called symbiosis kuna kitu inaitwa symbiosis in biology katika biology whereby you give i give eh mali ambapo unapeana na mimi nipeane you bless me i bless you nikubariki na wewe unibariki that is the principle of relationships hiyo ndizo njia za uhusiano you have to water each other unapaswa kunyunyuziana maji and so sometimes test this person wakati mwingine mjaribu mtu huyo if the person is expecting a gift let's say every month that month don't buy a gift kama huyo mtu anatarajia zawadi kila mwezi and just watch if they will throw tantrums. If the individual stays for one week without talking to you. Then you better prepare, then you better get prepared for this. Because you cannot live with someone who 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 decides to be quiet on you for one week two weeks simply because you did not buy for them something or you or you didn't do something for them if you check in with the person has been doing the same to the parents and so they will continue doing it in the marriage run hallelujah amen somebody if that person is really your friend even when you don't have a job they will hang around you looking at your effort but if you're a, but, but if you're a man right now and you say that you've lost your job the girls of nowadays normally say I give him two months if two months are over I leave him I laugh at them because I realize even the degree they have did not give them wisdom what if it is God's will for this man not to have a job because God is working on him? Maybe God wants to use him to tell others that women are all are also important. 
Pengine Mungu anataka kumtumia kuambia wengine kuwa wanawake pia ni wa maana. Because he didn't have a job and a woman fed him for 2 years. Kwa sababu hakuwa na kazi na bibi yake alimlisha kwa miaka miwili. And that a woman is a very important person in life. Kuwa bibi ni kitu chema katika maisha. And so I wonder what if you are the woman and you are losing your job should the man leave you anashanga eh tuone kama ni wewe mwanamke umepoteza kazi je mwanaume akuache if it is the man you want to leave if it is you you are telling him stay kama ni mwanaume unataka unataka kukaa unataka kumwacha kama ni wewe anakuambia ka because you are following what other women are saying and if you check in they are not believers of the word of god kwa sababu unafuata kile ambacho kwa wanawake wengine kwa nasema na ukiangalia hawa muamini Mungu ni wa kidunia part b ya pili of the process courtship is about openness and honesty kuchumbiana ni kufunguliana na kuambiana ukweli read for me philippians 4:8 Soma wa Filipi 4:8 and 2 Corinthians 8:21 Na wa Korintho wa 2:8:21 Philippians 4:8 says finally brethren whatever things are true whatever things are noble whatever things are just whatever things are pure whatever things are lovely whatever things are of good report If there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy meditate on these things. Amen. For it. For it. Wa Filipi 4:8 inasema Ambaye nimemtuma kwenu kwa sababu hiyo ili mjue mambo hii ili mjue mambo yetu naye akawafariji mioyo yenu Philippians 4:8 Okay 4:8 Inasema sorry inasema hatimaye ndugu zangu mambo mambo yoyote yaliyo ya kweli yoyote yaliyo staha yoyote yaliyo ya haki Yoyote yaliyo safi, yoyote yenye kupendeza, yoyote yenye safi njema, ukiwepo yote yatafakarini hayo. Amen. Amen. 2 Corinthians 8:21. 2 Corinthians 8:21 says, providing honorable things not only in the sight of the Lord but also in the sight of men. Sorry, 8:21. Yeah, 2 Corinthians 8:21. Okay. It says providing honorable things not only in the sight of the Lord but also in the sight of men. King James says providing for honest things not only in the sight of the Lord but also in the sight of men. Inasema tukitangulia kufikiri yaliyo mema si mbele za Bwana tu ila na ya mbele ya wanadamu. Nothing breaks a relationship like lies. Hakuna kitu ambacho kinavunja uhusiano kati uongo. Because lies affects trust. Maana uongo unaharibu ile kuaminiana. A relationship is built on trust. Uhusiano unajenga na kuaminiana. You want to keep somebody in your life that you know you can trust them with your life and even your money. Unataka kumweka mtu kwa maisha yako ambaye unajua unaweza Unaweza ukawaamini na maisha yako ana so, When you find that the person you are intending to marry is a pathological liar. Un, eh, unapopata yule mtu ambaye unataka kumwoa kuwa ni muongo, yani amezoea tu kudanganya. That is another red flag. Eh hiyo pia ni bendera nyekundu. That is a red flag. Hiyo ni bendera nyekundu. Because lies normally destroy a good could have been relationship. Kwa sababu uongo unasambaratisha uhusiano ambao ingekuwa mzuri. Because somebody will tell you I don't have a child only for you to realize that the person has a child in the village. Kwa sababu mtu atakwambia sina mtoto kwako wewe tukukuja kugundua baadaye kuwa mtu huyu ana mtoto kule kijijini. Man will tell you I am earning 150,000 so that you may have the desire to get married to him 
only for you to realize that he doesn't even have a job he's a con man in Nairobi Mwanaume atakudanganya kuwa anapokea mshahara wa 1150 kwa kwetu kukuja kukugundua kuwa ni mwizi huku Nairobi anapiga watu ngeta When these lies start cropping up during courtship Wakati uongo huu unaanza kuota katika kuchumbiana run kimbia run kimbia Do you know why? Unajua mbona? Because days are coming when you are going to receive calls that tell your husband to give us our money or else we are coming for your head. Kwa sababu kuna wakati utafika utaanza kupokea eh, simu ambayo ambayo inasema kuambia mume wako atupatie pesa zetu kama sio hivyo tutakujia kichwa chako. And you'll get tired of it. Na utachokeshwa na hiyo. There is a certain popular man in this Nairobi. Kuna mtu fulani ambaye anajulikana hapa Nairobi. He was once married. Alikuwa ameoa. But now his wife left him I believe after two years. Lakini mke wake akamwacha baada ya miezi Or eh, almost two years. Baada ya miaka miwili. Simply because kwa sababu tu of threats. Eh, kutishiwa. This man gave the woman the impression that he had money. Mwanamume huyo alimpatia mwanamke eh, alimuonesha mwanamke kuwa ana pesa. Only for the woman to realize this man was conning people he was borrowing from people without paying. Kwa hiyo msana tukukuja kugundua kuwa huyu mwanaume alikuwa anaibia watu pesa na hapo analipa. And she started getting threats over the phone calls. Na kaanza kupokea vitisho kwa simu. And the marriage ended. Na ndoa yao ikaisha. Some of us women look at men and we want men who have money. Wengine wetu kwa sana tunaangalia wanaume na tunatamania kuwa na wanaume Only for you to get married to to somebody who sells drugs a drug peddler. Kwa kwetu wewe kukuja kugundua kuwa umeoleka kwa yule mtu ambaye anauza miadarati. And so I'm telling you things that I have seen with my eyes. Anatuambia zile vitu ambazo ameviona kwa macho yake. Only for the woman to find herself as a single mother out here. Kwa maana foundation lakini msingi was wrong ilikuwa mbaya they didn't take time to court hawakuchukua muda wa kuchumbiana it was dating ilikuwa ni date they met in a club walikutana pale katika kilabu they thought of sleeping together wakafikiria kulala pamoja she became pregnant akapachikwa mimba after getting pregnant they said let us get married wakati kwa kupachikwa mimba kwa kamoa basi acha tukawane so long the woman realizes the man is is a drug peddler na kwa wakati mwanamke anakuja kugundua kuwa mwanaume huyu basi anasafirisha And the marriage ends after three years. Na ndoa yao inaisha baada ya Then she ends up living more years as a single person than the years she lived as married. Na anaanza kuishi maisha mingi kama mwanamke ambaye hana mume kuliko zile miaka ambazo kwa kuchumbiana. Only for the man to speak out later and say but you gave me a lot of pressure. Kwa mwanaume tukukuja kusema baadaye na aseme ulinipatia ulinipatia pressure. There was no honesty. Hakukua na ile ukweli. And that's why when you see some red flags you need to run. Ndio maana unapoona bendera nyekundu unaposa kukimbia. So number one, a real relationship is one where you love that person enough to be honest. Kwanza ni uhusiano Uhusiano kwa kweli ni ile ambayo unampenda mwenzako. One who really sana. loves you is normally honest with you. Yule ambaye anakupenda huwa anakwanga na ukweli kwako. Hata kwa second one is make Philippians 4:8 part of the foundation. Ingine ni fanya kwa Filipi 4:8 kuwa ni ndani eh, iwe kati ya maisha yako. The foundation stone upon which you build your home. Eh uhusiano ambayo misingi ambayo imetengenezwa ile ambayo unaweza jenga nyumba yako where by the test of time will not be able to destroy your marriage kwa wakati ambapo eh, kwa wakati ikifika haitaweza kuharibu ndoa yako the third one is seek counsel before making serious far reaching disclosures ya tatu ni tafuta mtu ambaye atakuelekeza bila wewe kuingia katika mtego huo meaning that kumaanisha kuwa seek advice from a mature person if there are things you are supposed to say about your past Tafuta maarifa kwa mtu ambaye amekomaa kwa vitu zile ambazo unataka kuongea kuhusu unyuma wako zile vitu How you are going to put it 
jinsi utakavyoiweka without hiding anything bila kuficha kitu because there are things you can say in a certain way and the person chooses not to marry you or get married to you kwa sababu kuna vitu unaweza sema kwa njia fulani na hiyo mtu achague kutokuo ama uoleke kwake the last one is have effective communication ya mwisho ni kuweni na maongezi mazuri about your past relationships. Kuhusu uhusiano wako uliopita ama There is a way in uliwacha. which your past affects your present. Kuna ile njia eh, eh, kuhusu ile iliyotendeka eh, kule awali inaweza haribu uhusiano wako wa sasa. If you have been imprisoned before let your let your partner know. Kama ulikuwa umepelekwa pale eh, ulikuwa umeshikwa uko jela acha mpenzi wako ajue if you have aborted before let your partner know kama ulikuja kutoa mimba acha mtu wako ajue because you may get to a point where you cannot give birth only for the doctor now to di- to disclose the reason as to why you cannot uh, conceive kwa sababu inaweza fika mahali ambapo hautawahi kuja kuzaa mpaka pale daktari anakuambia kwa kuwa hauwezi za acha mpenzi wako ama yule ambaye mnachumbiana naye ajue Genesis chapter 2 verses 25 as I finish Mwanzo 2:35 And they were both naked and the man and his wife and were not ashamed Mwanzo 2:25 inasema Nao walikuwa uchi wote wawili Adamu na mkewe wala hawakuwa wala hawakuona haya This is a very crucial foundation for every marriage. Hii hii ni msingi ili ambayo inaonekana katika kila ndoa. Praise the Lord. Amen. We shall continue next time. Tutaendelea nyakati eh kwa wakati mwingine. And so as a believer, kama muamini, these are things that can help you to prevent a miserable life in the future. Hizi ni vitu ambazo zinaweza kuzuia wewe kutofanya uamuzi mbaya. You may have gone to school Unaweza kwa umeenda shule But the lessons about life they are well taught from the Bible. Lakini eh, mafunzo kupitia maisha imefundishwa katika andiko. So if you follow whatever we have been learning. Unapofuata kile ambacho tumekuwa tukisoma. Your life will be better. Maisha yako basi itakuja kuwa pa. God has planned that you become a greater person. Mungu amepanga kwa utakuja utakuja kuwa mtu mkuu but you cannot move if lot is still living with you lakini hauwezi songa kama bado lot anaishi nawe you cannot move hauwezi songa if you are still heeding to the voices of jezebel kama bado unamsikia sauti kia jezebel you cannot move hauwezi songa if you are If you are living among the Egyptians kama ndo unaishi kati ya wa Misri you cannot move hauwezi songa if you pledge allegiance to other people kama kama unawazia wengine mabaya kama umeweka imani yako kwa watu wengine kama imani yako or your trust iko katika watu but if you wengine. choose to put your faith unto the living word of god lakini unapochagua kuweka imani yako katika andiko lake mungu you will go far utaenda mbali you will go far utaenda mbali remember kumbuka if joseph kama yusufu would have hidden kama angeficha to Potiphar's wife kama angesikiza kama angemsikiza mke kwa Potiphar would he have become Je. the ruler of Egypt angekuwa kiongozi wa Misri he would never have gone to prison angeenda pale ndani ya jela angekuwa katika jela Potiphar's wife was brought to prevent him from attaining his destiny mke kwa Potiphar aliletwa kwa kumzuia Yusufu kutofikia hatima yake which was greater ambayo than, ilikuwa kuu than sleeping with this woman eh ambayo ilikuwa kuu eh, kuliko kulala na mwanamke huyu so any time you are in to courtship kwa wakati wowote ambao um, uko katika kuchumbiana always put your destiny on the table so that you compare where this courtship is heading vis-a-vis your destiny. Eka hatima yako kwa meza na uone e, uone ni wapi hii uhusiano wako utafika na hatima yako itakuwaaje. If this courtship is affecting your destiny negatively. Kama kuchumbiana hii inafanya e, uhusiano wako ama hatima yako ikuwe mbaya. 
preventing you from becoming the person God intended you to be. Inakuzuia kwa wewe kwa yule mtu ambaye Mungu alitaka uwe. You better drop it. Achana nayo. It is a red flag. Ni bendera nyekundu. Because by the end of the day. Kwa sababu mwisho wa siku. God has the final say. Mungu ana neno la mwisho. And he always wins. Na huwa anashinda. We never win. Huwa tushindi. That is why you see these streets of Nairobi. Many people are born again because they tried with their might and power living their lives and they failed miserably. Watu wengi waliokoka kwa sababu walijaribu kwa nguvu zao zote kuishi maisha yao na wakakuwa wamefeli. I want us to be on our feet. Nataka tukasimame katika miguu zetu. No and I want us to pray. Na nataka tukaombe. For those that are single this is a very crucial point in life. Kwa wale ambao hawana waume mnapaswa kuomba kwa wakati huu. I want you to pray. Nataka mkaombe. For those that have teenagers in their homes. Kwa wale kwa na vijana ambao ambao ni barubaru katika nyumba zao. Pray for them that they are going to do things in a proper manner. Waombe kwa wataanza kufanya vitu kwa njia nzuri. Because it will bring honor in that home. Kwa sababu italeta heshima katika nyumba hiyo. Whenever a man or a woman leaves their home in an honorable manner. Wakati mwanaume ama mwanamke anatoka kwa nyumba yake akiwa na heshima kwa nyumba, fulani. Kwa nyumba yao. Kwa nyumba yao akiwa na e, heshima fulani. It brings joy to the parents. Inaleta furaha kwa wazazi. And it is the desire of every parent. Na ni shauku ya ni shauku ya kila mzazi. I want you to pray. Nataka ukaombe. Pray and ask God to help you. Omba na ukaambie Mungu akusaidie. Where you need to repent.
Yes, and